So let's now jump into the next section of this video series, guys. We're now taking a look at the filter section in Serum. By the end of this video, you'll have a better understanding of what these different filter types do. So the filter section is top right here and you can toggle this box on and off, the same as you can with the oscillators. You also have box A and B, you can toggle on and off. These show which oscillators will be affected by the filter. So if it's on A, oscillator A will be affected by the filter. If it's on B as well, then oscillator B will be affected by the filter. So first up, the low pass filters. You have these four. If we look on normal here, you have 6, 12, 18, and 24. So the lower the number, the more of the high tone comes through, as you can see there. And the higher the number, the less of the high tone comes through. So I'll just demonstrate here with the saw wave. See, that's low 24, so that's cutting lots of the high out if I go low 6. And gradually, gradually muffling out that high end and leaving us with the low, low end. So the first knob we have here is the cutoff filter. If I go back right to left, counterclockwise, we reduce that high signal. And if I go left to right, we bring back in that signal. So we can go on to modulate this with envelopes and LFOs to get a bit of movement in the sound. So the resonance knob boosts the section where the cut starts. So if I turn that up, you can see where that cut starts, it's boosting the signal there. So if I bring the cut off up, we're starting to get that acidic 303 sound. So if we move that around with the cut off. So the resonance knob is also a good one if we want to create those sort of spacey whistling pad sounds or effect sounds. Um, we just increase the resonance there, look. So the panning knob here does the same as it does with the oscillators. It spreads the sound left or right across the stereo field. Be another good one to modulate with an LFO or an envelope. And then bottom left here, we have the drive knob, which basically boosts the signal that is allowed through. So with a low pass filter there, it will be increasing the volume of that low signal. So next to the drive, we have the fat filter here, which is similar to the drive knob, uh, just boosting the frequencies. And this control will adapt to either morph or frequency mode, depending on which filter we're using. So the mix knob is quite straightforward. We can basically mix in either the full effect of the filter or take out the effects of the filter. Below the A and B indicators here, we have the noise indicator. Just here we can toggle on and off. So that will take the noise that we've added to our sound and also run it through the filter section here. And then below that we have the S for sub bass. So if we've got the sub turned on, it will also run the sub through the filter section there. So finally on this section we have the key tracking indicator, which basically enables us to play the filter on the keyboard in tune with the oscillators. So for example, if we've applied a lot of filtering to a sound, we can toggle this on and off and it will play the notes across the keyboard without distorting. So for example, with this sound, which is a bit more complex, where I've got this filter, a comb filter on. I'll put the key tracking on. And I can play that right across the keyboard without the sound corrupting. Or another way to explain that is if, like for this sound, if I've zeroed in on a particular sound I like using the wavetable position knob and I want to keep that same tone across the keyboard just switch on the key tracking tool 
So the next filters we have are the high pass filters, again from 6 to 24. And as it says on the tin, these filter the high frequencies through and keep the low frequencies out. So if we layer up a saw with eight voices, we get this quite large techno trancey sound. Bring the semitones up on the oscillator B. And then if we introduce the high filter, really letting those high frequencies come through. So moving on, we have the band pass filters. So these filters are a combination of both the high and the low pass filters. So the band pass filters focus more on the mid range frequencies and you can get cool tones again if you modulate it. And again, with the band pass filters, we can increase that resonance. You can really get those frequencies moving around with the filter cut off then. Then we also have these low pass, high pass filters, which are basically different mashups of all the above low pass and high pass filters. So comb filters sound really cool and are used in a lot of dubstep and drum and bass with this metallic sound, which can really add character to bass and lead sounds. So this filter literally delays the sound you have from the synth with another layer of the same sound, giving us this delayed signal. So this filter is a good one where you could add key tracking to, so it keeps everything in key. Okay, so now we've had a little look at the types of filter. Let's start making some sounds. So what I really want to do is just get making some sounds just with the sub oscillator, oscillator A, B and the filter alone, just so we get used to making sounds just with these tools here before we start adding effects and envelopes and LFOs. So as you can see with this one, I've got the sine wave here. I've got this long grease here and the sub here, and I've just put a high pass filter on. And I've literally just created a basic sound there just using these four tools. And if I move the wavetable position around. So I think you get the idea. It's just a case of playing around with these parameters. And then you can go on to add effects, envelopes, and LFOs, which will really add some movement to your sound. 